Hello and welcome. Last year I picked this Acer Aspire S out of a bin at Electronic Recycling Australia. They're one of South Australia's leading e-waste recyclers and they help and assist people with disabilities with ongoing employment. Now this thing's filthy and I don't know whether it works, so what better time than now to find out. The variety of laptops being disposed of these days is quite broad with this Acer Aspire S being the newest one I came across. It's quite dirty, so I'd assume it was used a lot before being thrown out. But why was it being thrown out? At a glance, it doesn't look damaged cosmetically. The screen, while filthy, doesn't appear to be cracked, which is even more surprising since it was thrown into a massive bin with hundreds of other laptops. This really is a modern Ultrabook with some desirable features. It's super thin, which again, made me surprised that it survived its journey through various laptop bins. Since I didn't find this with a charging brick, I had to find one. This was pretty cheap off of eBay. I didn't have one with a jack this small in any of my drawers. With much anticipation, I plugged it in. I was really relieved to see some signs of life and then the Acer logo, but no bootable devices were discovered. In the BIOS, it was not detecting an SSD at all, so it has either failed or there isn't one installed. So let's take a look inside thanks to the iFixit ProTec Toolkit. Getting into one of these laptops is thankfully an easy task, only requiring the removal of some small Phillips head screws. There were also a series of small clips that held the cover onto the chassis. I was careful not to pull too hard, which could result in things getting snapped. But that would have been the least of my problems. Just look at all this corrosion inside. This must have been thrown out due to liquid damage, but does it still work? And before we take things further, here's a word from today's sponsor Morning Brew. After a great way to start your day that's also completely free, one to get up to speed on business, finance and tech in a condensed, witty and informative daily newsletter, well, now you can thanks to Morning Brew. I gave it a shot and it was quite refreshing seeing global news presented in this way. I also came across many stories that I would have otherwise never known about. I'm very interested in space and never thought about how Russia's invasion of Ukraine would potentially jeopardize the collaboration between the US and Russian involvement in the ISS. These articles are well written and I found the daily newsletter format very easy to consume. So why not subscribe today? It takes only 15 seconds and it's completely free. Click the link in the description or pinned comment to start your mornings off with a cup of morning brew. To find out if the laptop is actually working, I bought a WD Green M2 SATA SSD online. This is pretty comparable to the drive that would have originally been in here, with the same capacity as well. I'm definitely taking a gamble putting it in this laptop, but I'll be cleaning out the internals later in the video. I'd be guessing the original drive was taken out due to privacy concerns or the owner wanting to reuse it. Relievingly, it detected our newly installed SSD right away in the BIOS, so the next step was to install an operating system to test the machine's functionality. Windows 10 should do nicely. It's also the OS that this laptop would have shipped with back in 2016. Sometime later, it was up and running without any issues that I could see. I installed updates and also tested out some games. I could play the latest version of Minecraft really well using the integrated graphics. Feel free to join my server if you'd like. Even with all the corrosion, I'm yet to find a fault. All the keys work as well as the ports. In Unigen Heaven, the Intel HD 620 graphics score an expected 656 points. This isn't really meant for gaming, but if you're playing some lighter games, it can pretty well even. Super Tux Kart is a game that plays very well on this laptop. During a CPU intensive workload, the cores maintain their base clock speed of 2.7 GHz and reach a comfortable 75 degrees Celsius. I'll redo the thermal paste regardless. And if you're willing to lower the screen resolution to 720p and put the graphical settings at their lowest, you can play games like BeamNG Drive at around 30 frames per second. And this is a fairly simple map which probably helps a bit as well. And this wouldn't be an old laptop video if I didn't play some old school RuneScape. It works great on here. The dual core i5-7200U CPU is fine for basic tasks and web browsing. I suspect that it was only water spilt inside this machine. It pooled at the bottom, which definitely saved the motherboard from serious damage. And after a scrub with some isopropyl alcohol, it looks a bit better. The first part I'm removing is the battery, which seems to still hold a decent charge, which also means I won't have to spend money on a replacement. The SSD I installed was only 40 Australian dollars. 
The ribbon cable connecting the two boards has an alarming amount of corrosion. I'm very thankful that it somehow still works, and pretty much every connector has some visible oxidization. And I may have made a mistake while removing the cooling fan tape. Bruh. This can't be good. Let's just hope I haven't broken any mounts or worse, damaged the motherboard. All I had to do was remove two screws and the board came out easily. The smaller board was just as easy to take out. After pulling back the shielding tape, I can breathe a sigh of relief. I only bent the copper cooling pipe, nothing more. With three small screws removed, we get our first look at the CPU die. Very gently, I made that pipe straight again. Crisis averted. Now we get to see just how much corrosion is underneath the shielding covers on the motherboard. At first, I thought these were soldered on, but no, they're just clipped in place and easy to remove. Using some isopropyl alcohol, I began scrubbing off some of the white surfaced rust. I looked over the smaller audio board which definitely has its fair share. Since everything was still functional, I believe just cleaning what's there should be enough. And feel free to let me know if that's not the case. So far, isopropyl alcohol has been quite effective. I really don't know how long this laptop has been sitting around for. Surely quite some time, but since the liquid had dried, the corrosion must have slowed down. I've seen MacBooks that have literally sat around for years with liquid damage, and they were way worse than this. I used an old toothbrush, properly cleaned of course, to get inside all the small gaps. The old thermal paste wasn't crusty, which is why the CPU was still cooled pretty well. I could never sell something like this knowing what's happened inside the laptop, so I'll be sure to use it over the next few months and see whether it remains functional. If this had salt water, juice or wine spilt on it, that acidity would have caused a whole lot more damage. It's looking better, not perfect yet, and I'll brush it again before putting it back together. Honestly, this has been a very easy laptop to take apart. I didn't need to follow any guides whatsoever, but if you need tutorials or parts, feel free to use my iFixit link in the description below. This has to be one of the thinnest batteries I've ever come across in a laptop, which in hindsight makes sense given how thin the overall design is. And one of the pins did have some blue corrosion forming. I was sure to get rid of that as well. And some of the pins required some extra scrubbing with a Q-tip to get shiny again. Once again, somehow they were all still working. While the outside is pretty dirty, there wasn't much dust clogging the fans or cooling vents. I brushed it outside and scrubbed off the small amount of rust that had formed on the back. Lining up the covers was a bit fiddly, however I'm so thankful that you could at least take these off. And if they were soldered on, I doubt I would have been able to properly clean off the corrosion. And while I could go to the effort of removing the keyboard and giving that a clean, it's fully functional and it seems like all the damage occurred where the water ended up pooling. I then applied some thermal paste. The small chip on the left doesn't require paste as I've learnt. I then reassembled the laptop. This is easily one of the best Acer devices I've taken apart. It's very easy to do so. This is a really filthy machine, so I think it's time we should give it a good cleaning. Using some eucalyptus oil, I removed the grime from the keyboard and palm rest. I don't know about you, but I could never let one of my laptops get this dirty. And you don't know how much I've been itching to clean off that display. Underneath the gunk, it's a rather clean panel. And to remove the sticker on top, I applied some sticker remover and let it soak in for a few minutes. This made it very easy to take off once in place. The corrugated surface definitely made the removal easier, and this laptop feels pretty durable. The outer casing on the base and top has a rubberized feeling, and I wonder how many years it'll be before it starts to devulcanize, in other words, melt. I am happy to report that the laptop is still working fine. This is quite a feature-rich device. It even has a backlit keyboard, which is fine to type on. I've always thought of Acer as a pretty average laptop builder, but I'm pretty impressed by this one. The battery life seems good so far, and I'll be testing it more over the coming weeks. And the 1080p display is pretty good. Definitely still decent for content consumption. And oh, I literally just realized that it has a touchscreen while I finished up filming. Thank you very much for watching. It was honestly a lot of fun getting this dumpster found laptop working once again. And if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. And if you like this one, definitely feel free to leave a like. I'll see you in the next video.